of the things I saw that your lab does is you look at centenarians and look at what they're, why they're different. Uh, could you talk about that program that you're doing there? Absolutely. I should say that I am not a centenarian geneticist. Uh, we have a large grant that, uh, uh, so we collaborate with uh, researchers at Albert Einstein who have an Ashkenazi Jewish cohort of centenarians. Um, there's groups in Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, other places that have their own cohorts. But what we've been trying to do is use the genetics of centenarians to identify what we call rare variants. So these aren't mutations per se, but they're changes in the genomes of the centenarians that keep them healthier for longer. So if you look at centenarians, how long they are disease-free. So they live longer, but they're disease-free for longer. And if you look at the cost of, of healthcare at the end of a life of a centenarian, it's minuscule compared to those of us who aren't gonna be centenarians. So they don't go to the hospital, they really don't need medical care, they die in their sleep at 110, which is the way we all would like to go when they're, and they're healthier, less Alzheimer's, less cancer. And what's intriguing so far is it's not that they have a lack of bad genes. So some of these centenarians actually have uh, mutations in cancer genes, BRCA1 mutations, um, APOE that may increase your risk of Alzheimer's. They have uh, things that may increase their, their risk of diabetes, but they don't get these diseases. So it appears they have variants that can offset the bad genes. So it's not the lack of bad genes, it's actually they have good genes. And so we and others are using the sequence of these centenarians to identify genes and pathways, which we think are important targets. And so uh, we've kind of proven this concept um, uh, near Barzala, Yusin Su, Vera Gorbanova, and others that are really doing the genetics have identified certain genes where their variants, either in the regions that, that regulate their expression. So for some of these, it means they're expressed at higher levels than centenarians. Other ones are expressed at lower levels. And then there's some that actually have variants within the, the protein coding sequence. So it changes the function of these. And the best example, and this has been talked about, it's not yet published, is a sirtuin protein. Uh, there are seven sirtuins. Um, they do important things to regulate metabolism, DNA repair, uh, a variety of processes, and have been linked to lifespan, at least several of them have in model organisms. And cert 6 is the one we've identified a two amino acid variant that improves an enzymatic activity. And now we've identified a drug which improves that activity, which we're now characterizing in mice to see if that makes the mice healthier through this CERT6, that in centenarians, at least some have a variant that improves their, that enzymatic activity of that CERT6 protein. Wow. Well, so, yeah. so, so the advantage here is that if you can prove that that variant really is contributing to, to lifespan in centenarians, mm -hmm. which we're doing by putting the variants in the mice, it's a validated target. It's validated. It's, it's, it's something that contributes to keeping humans disease-free for longer. So it, it, it's really an exciting time because we can identify these pathways, we can identify these genes, and we can develop drugs that mimic the effect of those variants in centenarians. At least that's the goal. And we have a couple examples of that today. So I, I think this is going to be in the, really an exciting area of the next 10 years. Yes. Yeah, that would be that. that yeah, yeah we, we just spoke with um, Dr. Cohen about uh, CERT6. Oh, yeah. yeah yes. and, and the experiments he did. So yeah, CERT6 seems very interesting. It see. does. And, and, uh, you know, I don't know if I would have predicted CERT6 of the seven sirtuins as being the key, maybe the lifespan, but uh, Vera Gorbanova has shown that CERT6 in humans is much more efficient at, at promoting DNA repair than the CERT6 from lower eukaryotes. So, you know, maybe CERT6 is the, one of the key enzymes for modulating repair of the damaged genome and the quality and activity of it improves in species that live longer, such as humans. Yeah, which would kind of bring it, bring us back to the beginning and the, the repair right. capabilities. Right, exactly, exactly. 
And so, so the drugs we're developing, um, which we're still characterizing, so I'm not, don't want to talk too much about them, but they are improving health span, but they also appear to improve DNA repair through a cert 6 dependent manner because they're mimicking, as I said, these variants in cert 6 that were identified in centenarians. Right. So I think it's a very exciting time. Yes. So we, would you be creating like transgenic mice that have this difference in them? So we are, we are not um, uh, directly. Um, the person who's really the cert 6 expert is Vera Gorbanova. So she yes. is, she is putting these variants, the human variant into a mouse, and then she's actually altering the different enzymatic activities of CERT6 to determine which one or, or maybe multiple activities are important for health span and longevity. So those studies are being done in mice. Um, and we're doing things here at the University of Minnesota. So we are overexpressing CERT6 to mimic other variants we've identified that increases expression. So we're just trying to see if more is better. And the answer is yes. If you make more of it, it's one way of improving its activity. There's just more of it. Um, so, so we are making mouse models. We're, we're developing assays to screen for drugs that mimic this. And then we're even humanizing worms. So going back to a very basic model system of aging, and these are, it's a worm model called C. elegans that lives two weeks. And it's been shown you can make genetic mutations in it that triples or quadruples the lifespan of these worms. But they have sirtuins, and so we are humanizing the worm so it expresses the human cert 6 and human cert 6 variant from centenarians. And then we can use the power of these, this model system to do genetics to identify targets for this improved cert 6 So we're going anywhere from worms to mice and then developing drugs, we hope to be going into humans in the not too distant future, all based on the CERT-6 uh, or the results from centenarians that show the CERT-6 variant. That's, that's really interesting. And, and uh, I mean, it seems quite achievable is because yes. <laughs> there's, there's so much that's coming on in the aging field that looks way out 